G'day folks. Well, just before I start doing some work on this and possibly closing it up enough that you don't get a very good look after this, I just figured I'd show you what it looks like. Um, this is in response to the previous video where I showed stripping the motor and uh, well, removing the motor and then eventually stripping it. But the inside of the tank needs a bit of a clean up. This is a Reasonable size power unit, seven and a half horsepower. Um, it's got a looks like a um, pressure regulator. It's got input, output, and then out. Yeah, pass regulation to the valve block. I think. Yeah. No pilot pressure. Looks like there's a pilot pressure line, and then. This must open only when the uh, the system is loaded up. Like if you uh, bottom out the end of a ram on its travel, this must open up. So it's more like a uh, overpressure protection valve, but it dumps straight back to tank. There's a fitting down there that goes straight to, straight to tank. Anyway, the pump itself is it South South Corp South Court something like that fairly big, looks like it's got a um, main bearing bypass bleeder out there it'll just spurt oil out back into the tank clearly this, this wouldn't work very well out of the tank looks like there's also a uh, bypass valve there which will just discharge straight back into the tank it's kind of handy having them inside the tank because you also have the uh, fluid level to help cool it down which would come up, yeah, it, it'd cover the pump. Once it's completely full, that's going to cover the pump and everything. I drained about 40 litres out of it, and I could probably add another, I don't know, 10 litres to it. So, yeah, it's not a bad, not a bad system. And that's a paper element filter. Uh, remove the top part of the housing, and that will uh, allow you to change the paper element. And there is also one on the input side, or the inlet side of the pump. Try and get this under the light. But there's a paper element down there. There it is. That's on the uh, suction side, the in inlet side of the pump, which has fairly large fittings, as you can see. They're probably one inch fittings, or three three quarter or one inch. The lines look like three quarter, so I'd say three quarter. Outlets from here. Look like they stepped down. It's like we're going from three quarter to half inch. So I'm going to take these out. Uh, pressure gauge can be relocated elsewhere. It's not even tight on that fitting anyway. It's just a leak waiting to happen. It's a good gauge though. The needle hasn't degraded. I find a lot of these the needles break or the um, glycerin becomes so moisture laden that they uh, corrode and the aluminum needle just breaks apart. I've got I've thrown a few out because of that sort of problem. But that's only active when you open the valve anyway. You can turn that off and just leave it. Particularly if it blows out or starts leaking. Anyway, um, that's just a quick look inside the power unit. I'm not going to take it apart. It's going to stay just as it is until I work out how well this valve block works. If I have to replace the valve block then I'll look at uh, redoing all the fittings and things, but to be honest, it looks like it should work quite well. And it also looks like I can just unbolt this valve block from this main manifold and uh, go from there. Although, nah, more than likely this manifold's part of the valve block, but either, either way I can re-engineer this whole tank to work with what I've got. And it's going to be driven by that diesel engine there three-cylinder Yanma, which I've now removed the little PTO pump from, that tiny little, tiny little thing there. <laughs> it's kind of dwarfed by the size of this one, and that's a good thing because I like big pumps. I know a little something about pumping. It's got to reseal the tank when I uh, put the lid back on, but overall this is going to work really, really well. So I hope you enjoy the little rambly tour of the uh, power unit um, what else do I say these solenoids operate or switch between fluid flow forwards reverse that sort of thing 
one becomes return to tank, one becomes pressure out and vice versa depending on what button you push on the control panel these are 240 volt or 196 volt DC controls and yeah essentially a power unit just turns rotational motion from an electric motor like that into pressurized fluid and they're really they're not simple but they're easy to understand when you understand fluid dynamics it's yeah it's an interesting subject it's worth studying if you like that sort of thing and you see they've definitely gone to town with the old blue max when they rebuilt this thing it's all been completely torn apart at some point and they've used a uh, loctite blue max on it that's the sort of thing i use for thermostat housings and automotive things that's about all anyway it works well it'll do its job and i'll probably end up uh using blue max to fix it back up anyway Though I think I have a tube of Copper Max, which is a high attempt stuff. Oh well. Hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. I'm not going to tear this down anymore, at least not unless I absolutely have to. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a straightforward system. It's just built inside a tank, rather than outside on the motor and siphoning from a tank. 